Okay, once again, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to welcome you to College Opening Batch 25 of Magister Management Perkebunan or MMP in Stiper, Yogyakarta. Thank you to all participants who are joining today's event, uh, both in offline here in this building and also for those who are joining through online session. Today, we are going to have general lecture and discussion entitled Agribusiness Marketing, a New Frontiers Research of Agribusiness. This general lecture brings together academia, researchers, and practitioners who are responsible for changing and the future. It's nice and great moment to see you all today through online and also offline meeting. Welcome to this event. Enjoy the general lecture. This event is organized by Magister Management Perkebunan or Plantation Management Postgraduate Program in Stiper, Yogyakarta. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me present you today's agenda for general lecture that we have today. Yeah? After the opening, we will sing Indonesian National Anthem entitled Indonesia Raya. Then we are going to welcome some speeches from the Director of Magister Management, per pro uh, Magister Management Perkebunan or Plantation Management Postgraduate Program and also followed by the speech from Rector of Instiper, Yogyakarta. And after that, we are going to go to the main activity, general lecture from our special guest, Professor Dr. Aziza Omar, uh, before question and answer session uh, related to this topic. We will hear a testimony from one of the alumni of Magister Management Perkebunan, a doctorate candidate, Ibu Dina Mardatila, who are taking her doctoral study in University Science, Malaysia. And then we continue the activity by having Q&A session with the guest speaker. We close to this activity by taking picture together. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we start today's activity, for all participants who are joining through online session, please let me mention event rules along this session occurred. Rule number one, the format of Zoom meeting account name is name underscore institution. When the speaker is giving a lecture or speech, the microphone will be on turn off mode. The attendance link will be shared in the Zoom meeting chat and YouTube comments. Participants could ask questions to the speaker by writing it down using this format, name, institution, and also uh, the question. A certificate will be sent through email address. We would like to inform you that chat column access will be given during general lecture speech by the keynote speaker. Dear ladies and gentlemen, for a brief moment, we would like to invite you to rise and sing Indonesian anthem, Indonesia Raya. May all we rise.
thank you and please be seated. In this great opportunity, we are having opening college for batch 25, Plantation Management Postgraduate Program or Magister Management Perkebunan in Stiper, Yogyakarta. And also we have general lecture from our special guest, Professor Dr. Aziza Omar from Marketing Section, School of Management, University of Science, Malaysia. Welcome, Professor. However, this event today begin the collaboration. This event today uh, would be one special moment for us to begin the collaboration between Institut Yogyakarta and also University of Science Malaysia. We do hope in the future Institut Yogyakarta and USM could have more great collaboration in terms of student exchange, maybe lecturer exchange, international program, research collaboration, and many more. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Uh, before we move forward to another activity, I would like to uh, welcome the rector of Institut Yogyakarta and also vice rector here, the director of uh, from Magister Management Perkebunan, uh, MMP, Ibu Professor Dr. Professor Dr. Insinyur Kadarwati Budiharjo SU, welcome. Professor Dr. Aziza, welcome to this event and also the Dean from Forestry Faculty, the Dean from uh, Agriculture fac Faculty and also the Dean from Agriculture Technology Faculty and also from uh, board members from Yayasan Kader Perkebunan Yayasan Pendidikan Kader Perkebunan or YPKPY. Welcome to this event. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for us to hear the speech directly from the Director of Plantation Management Postgraduate Program or MMP in Stiper Yogyakarta. Now, please welcome Professor Dr. Insinyur Kadawar Ka Professor Dr. Insinyur Kadarwati Budiharjo SU. Professor, time is yours. Silakan, Ibu. Thank you. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is such an honor for me to welcome you who are joining in online and also offline. Recording in progress. To the general lecture, first of all, I would like to greet and welcome dear distinguished Bapak Ketua Pembina dan Ketua Pengurus Harian Yayasan YPKPY beserta anggotanya. Tadi Bapak Hadianto, Sekretaris Yayasan sudah hadir, tetapi beliau pamit karena akan uh, ada keperluan yang lain. For the Honorable Rector of Stiper Agriculture Institute in Stiper Yogyakarta, Dr. Engineer Harsawadana, Master of Engineering. For the Honorable Vice Rector 1, Vice Rector 2. This is, thank you, uh, Mr. Hedianto from Yayasan. Honorable Vice Rector 1, sorry, Vice Rector 2, 
fire structure three and also fire structure four. For the honorable, the dean of faculty, forestry faculty, Mr. Sugeng, agriculture faculty, and also agricultural technology faculty. In this special occasion, I would like to also welcome our special guest, Professor Dr. Aziza Omar, Marketing Section School of Management, University of Science Malaysia. Professor Aziza Omar Lakli is also Academic Supervisor of Ibu Dina Madatila. Ibu Dina, a doctorate candidate from University of Science Malaysia and a lecturer of Incipur Yogyakarta. It is such a pleasure for me to see you here, Professor Aziza Omar. I would love to welcome all lecturers here, undergraduate lecturers and postgraduate lecturers, all the students, all the students, new and from previous years of postgraduate plantation management program. I am very thankful that today we have this great opportunity in general lecture with the given topic agribus agribusiness marketing, a new frontier research of agribusiness. This general lecture is also a part of our event today. College opening for students from Postgraduate Plantation Management Program or MMP in Super Yogyakarta, batch 25. Ladies and gentlemen, this Plantation Management Postgraduate Program or MMP had been established since 2006. And in the past few years, the average of student in MMP is around 30 until 50 students for each batch. Now, we have active students here in this program for about 87 students. New students' journey has already begun and we are all ready for that. We still open this program until 16 September 2022 for non-regular program because there are many demands for non-regular program. MMP or Plantation Management Postgraduate Program is a plantation-based campus. Therefore, our curriculum, materials, and competence are in a frame of plantation. Even all the lecturers are coming from plantation background, whether their academic knowledge and precious background. MMP has great collaboration with so many companies spreading in Indonesia. The col collaboration itself impacted in many big research projects, especially in palm oil. Those projects are implemented in company under the supervision of MMP. Some companies that we are already connected to are Union Sampurna Triputra, sorry, Union Sampurna Triputra Persada, First Resources, Bumi Tama Gunadaya Agro, Wilmar International Plantation, Astra Agro Lestari, Perkebunan Nusantara, Madu Baru Yogyakarta, Badan Pengelola Dana Perkebunan Kelapa Sawit or BP, uh, BPKS, BPDPKS, and so many more. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm especially excited to welcome USM to take part in collaboration with us in Stipper Yogyakarta. Lastly, we do hope the connectedness and also collaboration between University, University of Science Malaysia and Incipur Yogyakarta could bring us into implementation soon. 
I give my special thanks to Professor Aziza Omar because of your willingness to be the speaker and college opening we have today. We are grateful to have you this morning, Professor. Thank you for all the, the participants today who join in online and also offline in this room. College opening. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Wow, thank you, Professor, for the nice and wonder wonderful speech from you. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now it is the time for us to hear the speech and also symbolic opening college from Rector of Institute Yogyakarta. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Insinyur Harsawardana, Master of Engineering. Bapak Harsawardana, time is yours. Honorable Professor Nur Azizah Omar, welcome. The Honorable Director of our Plantation Management Postgraduate Program, Professor Katarwati. Vice Rector, Academics Affairs and also Administration. And not also to forget this Adianto is one of the ours uh, member of our foundations, and then uh, good morning also to Pak Jai and uh, Pak Asis dan Pak Itman, who also attend our seminar today, and dear uh, Dean of Forestry, Institute of Jakarta. And also not to forget the student of Prof. Nur Aziza Omar. They also join in ours to this interesting program in Institute of Jakarta. And not but those least also our students, Institute Pertanian Yogyakarta. Yeah. Steeper Institute of Agriculture. Good morning, everybody. And uh, on behalf of my institute, I welcome Hartley, Professor Aziza, and I think we are very grateful and very happy to have you here. I think also for the first time we have uh, contact with you, with the University of Science Malaysia, and I hope that this today even will be also a good opportunity for both of the university having a corporation collaboration, and I think also will be benefit for our uh, undergraduate students. The business, uh, I think, so, can be run and also can be run well yeah, when the application of management is uh, appropriate. The marketing is one of the functional management that has a key role in promoting and growth of the company. And with the advance and also uh, of the technology, digital technology is changing the whole world. How to do a business, how to do uh, a contact with others and also do some activities that will be also different than before. So in the next uh, two hours, I think and I do believe that we will have uh, insight and also Professor Nur Asyah will give some uh, idea, insight, and also uh, share uh, experiences in promoting uh, the research 
through the management. And I think I do believe that we will get some insight uh, in the next two hours. Then I do believe that we enjoy this uh, meeting. And I think uh, I hope that you stay for two hours in this class. And then thank you again for Sir Nur Aziza. And then I hope that uh, this could start for Put uh, University and Put Institute. Okay, thank you. And uh, heartily welcome to our institute and also to Yogyakarta, very rich uh, city in uh, Indonesia. Okay, thank you. And uh, formally, I will open this uh, lecture and officially open. Thank you very much for the speech. Yeah, Bapak, Bapak Rektor, thank you very much for the speech and also opening uh, ceremony, symbolic opening using uh, knocking, yeah. knocking the microphone. Thank you. Yeah, have a seat please Bapak, thank you. Uh, all right, in this special moment, uh, we are waiting for the main activity today. <laughs> Ibu, yeah, okay. Now this is the time for us to have general lecture directly from Professor Dr. Aziza Omar. Before we start, uh, let me introduce you a little bit about our distinguished guest speaker, Professor Dr. Aziza Omar. Uh, can you please share the screen of, yeah, the CV? <laughs> Professor Dr. Aziza Omar is a senior lecturer of Organizational B, uh, School of Management, University Science Malaysia, USM, or Marketing Section, School of Management, University Science Malaysia. Professor Dr. Aziza Omar uh, has been teaching and supervising undergraduate and also postgraduate students, MBA, MA, and PhD, especially in marketing services marketing, brand management, consumer behavior, social marketing, web-based marketing, health, tourism, and many more. She has published numerous articles in international journals, chapters in research books, teaching modules, and also books. She also has conducted many seminars, training courses, and workshops related to uh, marketing. Yeah, Ibu. Okay, so this is a brief profile about our distinguished speaker. And now, please welcome Professor Dr. Aziza Omar. Salam sejahtera ibu-ibu bapak-bapak terutamanya uh, Profesor Dr. Harsarwa Dana. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name uh, incorrectly because uh, we just met like a few minutes ago. So to capture the names and what so forth is not that easy. But I'm sure after this I will pronounce correctly. And then Professor Dr. Kardawati, thank you so much. And to the rest, of the members here, you are all my distinguished guests, okay? And to the students, all the participants, the audience, offline or online, for me, every one of you are my distinguished guests. Because come from the marketing perspective, every one of you are so special in my heart, okay? So that's how a marketing person perceive every consumers are special. They are different in many ways, but you are special because without all of you, without my customers, for example, our products are not going to be relevant at all. So that's why every one of you, either online or offline, you are special to me. Without seeing the faces or being here physically, for me, you are special. Okay? So 
what I'm going to do today, uh, thank you so much. Um, being a speaker in various countries as well, I used to work. I mean, I've been walking around. And they already said to me, I can only walk from this uh, black sticker. Okay, I'm going to be here as well. Okay, no problem about that. Because in the past, I've been teaching in a class around 1,000 students. Giving a lecture in 1, 000, with 1,000 students, it's not an easy. You have to move around. So being in an academy, academy for 15 years as well, and also private, I also working in the private sectors. Currently, also I'm a consultant for various uh, government agency and non-government agencies as well. So what I'm going to be here today is not going to teach anybody, but I want to share share the knowledge. I strongly believe being a person in academia as well as the private sector, industry sectors. We have to work together because in the past, I was a deputy dean for networking. There is community and industry. We talk about uh, triple and quadrihelic uh, collaborations between the institutions, academic knowledge, and then we uh, collaborate with the industry uh, and then society and also agencies. That's what we are here today, sharing knowledge. We learn from each other. I'm not coming here to say that I'm good, I'm perfect. No, there's no such thing. Because every product that we innovate and create in the market does not mean it will cater everybody. It's not going to cater everybody's preference. Take an example of rice, for example. Nowadays, there are a variety of categories of rice alone. Normal, uh, long grains, Okay, and then sticky rice, brown rice, uh, and then we call it red and brown rice. Okay, there are many flavor and taste, but at the end of the day, all this type of rice, for example, is not meant for everybody. People are so concerned about their health, for example, they may go for the one that have less cholesterol, carbohydrates level, and what so forth. For those who are really worried about diabetics, for example, doctors say you must reduce your carbohydrate. So they will go to low GCI, for example, glycemic index rise. So this is what I'm trying to tell you. The role of marketing, very, very critical nowadays in ensuring that the product or services that you innovate or you create to be in a market really, really relevant, useful to your target market. So that's why I choose this topic, okay, agribusiness marketing, how and what actually the research is going to be. And regardless, whatever or whatever or disciplines you come, maybe you may come from science, for example, okay, science backgrounds, technology backgrounds, management backgrounds, you require marketing. Especially the scientists, they have a great ideas. I was talking to the director today. Most of the scientists, they create great products, okay? And they feel like the product is the best, the only one in the world, the only one in the market. But the question, who decides whether your products your agricultural commercializations has value to your target market. That's why every one of you, regardless you from physics, I keep telling this, whether you're physics students, you are chemistry students, you are biology students, whether you are IT students, you cannot live without marketing. This is to show you now customers well acute with information knowledge. Without that, they may not make a right decision. And now we are talking not just about Generation X, Generation Y, we are talking about millennials. I was in Binus last week. I was in Atmajaya yesterday. I talk about the metaverse. Anyone heard about metaverse? Yep, this is all about virtual virtual platform. When we talk about metaverse, it's all about online, that people talk about online gaming. You see my age, I'm already five series. 
Yeah. And then when I talk to younger people, the language that they use and I use, completely big gap. And the youngsters, they are talking differently. So what I'm trying to tell you, if we do not know who will consume our products, then as a producers of agriculture products, we are in trouble. So that's why we need to know what is the agribusiness marketing. How do I go for my slides? Should I have anything? Okay. Now, this is a little bit about myself. I've been with University of Science Malaysia for 15 years and several years in the industry, and I'm doing lots of work, and I moved to various countries as well. Uh, before that, can we click on my link or not? The USM video. Let's introduce a little bit to all of you who never been to Penang, who never been to University of Science Malaysia. Can, can you click that? Uh, no, the USM video. USM video. Welcome I think this is the best. Management. Everyone should know USM. Because I've been told that the backgrounds of the participants today, they are quite variety. Okay. Uh, it's a bit difficult when I don't control it. You have it? Can you click on the USM video? This is what technology is all about, isn't it? That's okay. Uh, technology will facilitate. I am okay. Bella. On behalf of the entire campus community, welcome to Penang and to University Science Malaysia. USM is also known as University in the Garden with its beautiful and scenic campus setting. We take pride in creating an environment that would bring about the feel-good factor to the campus community as indicated by the increased happiness index. Established in 1969, USM became a research university in 2006-2007 and has been awarded the APEC status in 2008. Currently, USM comprises of five campuses locally and one abroad in India. Serving the campuses are 10,000 staff members. USM has an enrollment of more than 31,500 students, with undergraduates numbering at 21,000 and the postgraduates at 10,000. International students are in the 7% of the total student population. USM is also recognized by UNESCO as the preferred university for community engagement. USM views the harmonious integration between the arts and the sciences as an innate strength. This is what we have for you in store this afternoon. Okay, thank you very much. That's a little bit the overview of University of Science in Malaysia. So I do hope you, all of you will have interest to come. And hopefully when we have the collaborations between Instapur and University of Science Malaysia, then we will have more activities between both institutions. Okay, shall we go to my next slide, please? All right, uh, basically this is what I'm going to cover, okay, on the agribasis. Next slide, please. All right, uh, with the time period being given to me, okay, there are four uh, areas that I will share with all of you. Obviously, I will talk about the overview of agribusiness, and then I will talk on the agribusiness and marketing, how important it is. And then what is the value change of agribusiness? Everyone should know this because when we talk about producing a product, we have to understand the change from the raw materials to the consumers in the market. That's the value change I will talk as well. And then the final one I will talk about agro-technopreneurship. Okay, I've been uh, leading and also the leader for technopreneurship programs between government to government, that is Malaysian government to South-South countries. That's the reason why I travel a lot every year to India, uh, I've been to uh, South Africa, I've been to uh, Ecuador, I've been to Trinidad and Tobago, I've been to Tehran, Turkey, many more. What we do in that program is a five days program. 
we offer uh, all these participants, around 30 to 40 of them, they represent in various countries. And they are the key persons who actually make a decisions and they come from uh, agriculture, they come from manufacturing and what so forth. They are actually foresee how to actually transform the economy of the country by imparting the technology. So that's what the technopreneurship program is all about. I was talking to your rector as well, and hopefully we can do some collaborations on that. And it's very interesting. It's basically uh, opening the idea knowledge, okay, to the participants representing the country that a country cannot sustain if they just go on traditional approach. So technology now, whether we like it or we don't like it, we have to embrace, we have to adopt, and it's going to transform. So that's why I, uh, we came up with the technopreneurship program under the Ministry of Science and Technology. And we will talk about how this technopreneurship transformation, especially in the agriculture. I do not have much information about the agriculture, but I've done so much research already before I came here. But I can talk in terms of the business perspective, in terms of the demand of consumers in the market, and how it's going to be in future. Because we have several generations. The taste and preference for food nowadays is different. We talk about creativity, creative marketing, content marketing. Now we talk about metaverse marketing. That's also going to come in the market. So if we don't take advantage, we don't try to explore and discover, then we as the producers, okay, is going to have a problem. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, what I'm going to introduce here, okay, something maybe for those who never been in the management, you may not ever come out to this understanding or model. Why I produce this uh, showing and sharing with you, this is very critical for everyone to understand. And for business, marketing people, innovators, they need to understand. This is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. What is it all about this Maslow hierarchy of needs? It's all about motivational theory in psychology. When people consume drinks, food, it is all about your psychological needs. You feel hungry. Who tells you you feel hungry? It's your body telling you are hungry, you are thirsty. So that's why Maslow hierarchy, okay, in 1950s, that is Abraham Maslow, he actually developed this theory. He said that in reality, every one of us, okay, will try to fulfill all these five tiers of motivational. The needs, basic needs, psychological need, and self-fulfillment needs. Every one of us, every morning when we wake up, we are actually practicing this theory without we realize that. That's why people in management, social sciences, we have to understand these theories. And I always encourage the scientists, okay, if you create a product, you have to understand the theory. Because you need to know where exactly your product will fulfill the needs of your consumers or your target market. So very critical for us. We notice that many scientists, they create the product and then it's not saleable in the market. Even in my university, many scientists, they create the products. They got gold medal award in the exhibitions, conference, competitions, challenge, and what so forth. And next month, I'm going to Switzerland because the nanotechnology company that I mentioned to you just now, we are the startup company. We produce nanotechnology products, and we are representing ASEAN and also Malaysia as a champion. And next month, I'm going to Switzerland to compete at international world global competition. Wish me luck with my company. <laughs> okay? So that's what I'm trying to tell you. When we want to create any product, we have to know which level 
we are trying to fulfill. And mental hierarchy say that when we come to physiological needs, the bottom here, this is the fundamental for any human being to survive, to move forward. That is where I mentioned here, food, water. These are the basic. That's trying to show you how agriculture produce very, very critical. Without this level, human beings won't go further to achieve. So these are the basic needs everyone needs to understand. And you can see how important all of you that involve in agriculture, plantation. You are actually fulfilling what Maslow already have studied and prove it. Food, water is the basic need, very critical for people to survive. Without, we can't survive. So when we talk about this Maslow hierarchy of needs, saying that the focus is that every one of us will maximize our well-being. And this is in line with the Sustainable Developing Goals, okay, SDG. Because United Nations has mentioned that whatever you design, whatever you innovate now, you have to fulfill the goal of SDG United Nations. One of that is talking about food, food security, food safety. So... This is what I said that agriculture, plantation produce, it's very significant. Without that, then we will not accomplish all of this. So all of you, I give a big applause because you are actually in right, important, significant contributions. Not only to your country, but to the nation as well. Give a big applause to everyone here. Otherwise, I won't come here. I'll be hungry all the time, right? Yeah, so how important you are. That's why I said every one of you are so special to me. It's an honor for me to be here and standing here as well. Next slide, please. Okay, this is just I want to show you, okay, the ranking of the world's 10 most populous country from 1990 to 2022, and they're also projecting to 2050, okay? This is all about countries that have high population. And you can see it changes the position every year from 1990 to 2022, and then to 2050, all right? And your country also here, okay? We can see from 1990, the changes of the population is increasing. You can see that. For marketing, for business perspective, this is a very good sign. Why? Because it's showing the demand of the food, as Maslow Hierarchy was saying just now. More people in the world, the more they want to eat. So the more significant your contribution. But the question is, can you meet this expectation? Can your country produce agribusiness to them? Because every single year, the number, population, millions, it's increasing. That's why if we talk about climate change, okay, drought and everything, we are so worried because this population may go hunger. So that's why I'm standing here today to talk about how important the marketing to be in corporate in your agribusiness, in your agriculture, in whatever you produce because you are important. I want you to go out afterwards feeling proud that you are very significant, not only in your country, in my country as well, and also the entire world. That's what you should feel in that way. And I feel honored because I've been with all the genius here. 
Okay? So this is just to show you the changes of the population is not going to decrease, but it's going to increase more. And these indicate that more people want to eat. More people have their references. But can you produce? This is like supply and demand. When the demand is higher, the supply is lower, what is going to happen? Okay, let's move to the next slide, please. So based on that number of population, they relate to food demand, as what I indicated just now. By 2030, the global economy could double in size, okay, such as India, China, they will swell up and represent 40%, 40% of global middle class consumption. And this up from less than 10% in 2010. This is just to show you how your contribution in agribusiness, in producing all the product based from plantation is very critical. So you don't worry that you don't have a job. Forever you will have a job in your career. I'll talk about that as well. Can we move to the next slide, please? Excuse me. <laughs> Okay, this is just to indicate to you, okay, based on the food consumptions that's now global, we are talking about per capita consumption. By 2030, average per capita food consumption in developing countries, we are in developing countries, is expected to grow, okay? And you can see that the numbers, it's increasing. So... This is what I'm trying to indicate, to tell you, to take your attention seriously. The industry that you are in is very critical. Okay, let's move to the next slide. And this is where I'm going to relate about agribusiness philosophy. We are academia, we are students, so we have to understand the philosophy of that a bit. We are talking with knowledge, we are talking with theories, and we are talking with practical experience as well. So what happened is that it say that agribusiness philosophy say that agriculture and food industry, okay, have historically, means in the past itself has been known, the main drivers for countries economic growth and development. That's what Mesul Haraki was saying. This is the fundamental of it. So that's why this is the main drivers, not only for the survival of the population, but also for the economic growth of the country and development. And when we talk about agribusiness, it focuses on, okay, all agricultural sector in a complete system from upstream to downstream then we may ask the question, what is upstream to downstream? And this also midstream. I will explain to you later. And then it's also say that nowadays, all the farmers are no longer should be in the traditional approach. We are no longer in the conventional approach. We have to go more than that, beyond than that. That is, we have to go to modern profit oriented, commercialize it, have the value for your customers. Because when we talk about social exchange theory, people willing to exchange their money if they know what are the values you get. It's like I mentioned to you about the category of rice just now. People are willing to pay more for the brown rice, organic rice, for example. Why? Because they know the value of that. So in the marketing perspective, when we create a product, regardless from the raw materials, we innovate becoming a product. There are levels of value we are looking at. We talk about core value, functional value, and augmented value. The core value is about what this product is all about. Like I'm holding this, mine. 
What is the functional value of this mind? It's for me to use and talk. Yes, very true. And with this mind, I can even talk to 1,000 people without screaming, you know, without losing my voice. That is the core value of this product, the functional value of this product, okay? To ensure the function of this product is working well. The core value that's the most critical companies are looking at now because that creates the competitive advantage. The core value is that it's giving me convenience. Save me energy from screaming. That is the core value. It's like you are taking supplement. What is the core value? What is the functional value of the product? And what is the augmented value is the additional value you add to this, the warranty. Okay, if you buy this mine, it will last for 12 months warranty service. To the youngsters, I talk about your smartphone. It's much better. They pick up very fast. The functional value, okay, of your smartphone, you have all the apps. But when you talk about the core value, is social interaction. Emotionally attach you to communicate to your friends. The augmented value can be the warranty service and what so forth. Packaging, that is also another augmented value. Similarly, in agriculture product, when we talk about tapioca chips, okay, you eat tapioca, it gives you nutritional value, carbohydrates. Tapioca itu dipanggilnya singkong ya. Ubi, yes. It has high carbohydrate value. But can you jual your singkong just like that on the street side? Yes, you can. There are people going to buy. But do you think the youngsters like this will buy? No way, no class. Who going there and carry one kilo of singkong? At their age. My age, yes. I will buy washing, rubbing, cooking, boiling. We go through all the process. Their age, no way, no class, prof. But if I make the chips, I put in the transparent plastic like normally we believe on the right the roadside. You think they will buy it? Not really. No class. I will buy because my generation is like that. They won't buy. But is I transform that in glittering packaging, aluminum star with logo, with their icon like that. You think they will buy? They will. They will buy. They don't mind to spend because they look at about product classification. They relate to their lifestyle. And nowadays, I ask all my children, students, whether they eat rebus, think kong rebus. With kelapa, right? With coconut. Yeah, I eat. I enjoy it. With salted, uh, apa itu, ikan. Salted fish. Oh, these those years when I eat, like, oh God, my God, this is really good. But you ask these youngsters, what? My kids, they look at, why, why are you eating this, ma'am? You know? But when that chips you buy, like, in Malaysia, 15 ringgit per pack. Oh, we are crazy about that. This is what we call it transformation. Yeah, you see the young students, yep, you are right. You know what our mind is thinking. Yeah, that's what marketing is all about. We read the mind of our consumers. So that's why when we talk about agribusiness philosophy, now we have to change that mentality. From conventional, traditional, we have to go more advanced, sophisticated. Going to meet Okay, the needs, the wants, and desire of our market segment. Next, please. Now, what is agribusiness? We talk about agribusiness, agribusiness, agribusiness. I have to do lots of research before I come here. I have to read lots of literature in order for me to really understand how marketing can be part, incorporate, and in this agriculture. So it's saying that. The term of agribusiness has been introduced by Davis and Goldberg, 1957. This is a long time ago. And they talk about agriculture production. Okay? 
It includes everything. Seed supply, crop production, agrochemical, farm machinery, distribution, processing, marketing, and retailing. Marketing and retailing of agriculture produce to consumers. In other words, since 1950s, marketing is already there. They already, the scientists already mentioned about this. But the question is, do we realize about that? Do we realize about these or not? And it's also that agribusiness nowadays has evolved from agriculture, okay, and has become complex system that reach beyond the farm. In other words, if you are the farmers, you cannot just think about your farm only. You cannot just think about the soil of your farm. You have to think beyond than the farms. And this is what value change is all about. Supply change management is all about. And it's also say that, okay, when you talk about the complex system reaches beyond than the farm, it has to involve, okay, bringing food to consumers. Involve all those. These are the stakeholders, shareholders. They must involve. Not just the farmers to take responsibility and duty, everybody must get involved. Then only we can talk about sustainable development of agriculture. It's not just one person rule. And it said that agribusiness include not only those that farm the land, but all the peoples. All the people firms provide inputs, process the output, manufacturing the products, transport and sell product to consumers. So if you are in operation management, you will understand the process. Input, process, output. It looks very simple, but in reality, it's a complex system because it involves all the stakeholders. Everyone must play a role. This is where agribusiness must explore the research, not only in the context of plantation, but you have to think beyond than that. Next slide, please. Wow, now looks very complicated already. By looking this, your mind also be thinking, what on earth is this? This is just to sum up to you, input, process, Output, how in reality it works. Okay, when we talk about input elements, we talk about seed, seedlings, fertilizer, feed, medicine, pesticide, irrigation, water, and many more. And from there, it developed a cluster in agribusiness. We talk about solar energy, ICT, suppliers, communication and storage, processors, Credit suppliers, the banking. Many people didn't realize how banking industry work closely with agribusiness. That's why in Malaysia, I'm not sure in Indonesia, we have SME Bank, Small Medium Enterprise Bank. This is to support, yeah. I'm sure Indonesia also have. Based on the countries I go, every country have specific bank that support the small medium. And here you have micro business as well, isn't it? So that's why business support services, these are the cluster. And many agriculture farmers tend to forget. Their role is not just there, it's also here. They have to know, they must have the knowledge, they must expose to the training, they must work and in hand. Then only we can talk about sustainable of agribusiness, sustainable of agriculture. If you don't change the attitude and mentality, it's going to be tough in any business. That is another issue, which is I'm not gonna to touch in this presentation. Because the attitude and mentality of small, medium, and micro businesses, it's very challenging as well. 
beside giving the support, if we don't change the mentality and the perception, it's going to be critical. That's why this kind of seminar for young generations who are taking all the management courses related to agribusiness, regardless whatever produce, it's very critical for you. So that you know how important your role to be in this world. It's not just taking the degree, but you don't know what to do after that. No, you are very important. And from there, if, if you have effective okay, support system, it's integrated well, then you also have the market access. The income, nutritional, life do. This is where we talk about Maslow hierarchy of needs. Without this integration, then we will have a problem. Now, let's go and explore a little bit further how marketing come into picture. Because we talk about agribusiness marketing. Based on American Marketing Association, they define marketing is the performance of business activities that direct the flow of good and service from producer to consumer or user. And the guru of marketing, I use a lot of Philip Kotler works, he said that marketing more than any other business function. So if you talk about management, we have human resource, okay, operation technology management, we have finance, okay, we have accounting, but we also have very important marketing. We can have very talented people. We can produce the best product. If we don't have marketing department or person to market, to convey the message, what are the values of your plantation, then it's going to be nowhere as well. That's why Philip Kotler say that it is more than any other business function that deals with customer. In other words, marketing is the first hand person that communicate, interact, deal with the customer. And he said that creating customer value, you create the value for your customer and satisfaction. What happened is that when we want to buy, eat anything, we already have expectation. Mengharapkan sesuatu, pengharapan. Okay, you expect this, 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 this. And then you purchase, you makan, then you say, oh, yuck, the taste is not good. Eh, what is this food all about? Then it's already below your expectation. When it is below your expectation, what happened? You become unhappy. Yes, unhappy. You will viral nowadays. Youngsters viral. TikTok, Instagram. Look, look, don't come to this restaurant. Uh -huh. Expensive. They provide rubbish food. No taste. But go to hipster cafe. Hipster cafe nowadays. I see Yogyakarta. I have so many coffee shops. And this really meet youngsters, okay, uh, expectation. They go there, it's not just about coffee. Coffee, it's coffee for some people. Black, it looks black. Coffee never looked brown. It started from the plantation, it's still black. Either you roast it or not, it's coffee. But the surrounding, the package, the ambience, we call it. The sounds of the cafe, music, the murals they draw, that's what attract them. But the purpose, the core business is coffee. But the core value, what do they look at? Image, reputation, prestige. That's what branding come into picture. So that's why just now I said that if your product, Singkong, raw, you sell it, yeah, it's sellable, but only to those small market. But if you churn, this sing kong into various forms, cater the needs of generations, Z, alpha, millennials, then your business will 
sustain. And he said some more. It is all in the heart of modern marketing thinking and practice. He didn't talk about traditional marketing. It's about produce, manufacturer, wholesaler, retailers, then only end user. No, he didn't do that. He said the modern way. The modern way means you have to evolve your strategy, how you engage and approach with your consumers. It's very important. And then it say that marketing is the delivery customer satisfaction at a profit. That's why I love to be a consultant. I talk about money. Yes, money. That's why I came from the industry. I've been trained to think about every single day how to make money out of this product. That's why 0.01 cent I count. For you, maybe not. For a business person, one cent is very important. Otherwise, I can't close my account. So he talk about profit. Business must think and make profit. Otherwise, you don't make business. So whatever you produce, you have to think how to transform this value into profit. Profit can come in many forms. People always thought, like, oh, a dollar. No, profit can come in terms of loyalty, customer satisfaction, image. That's why Starbucks in Jakarta is like everywhere. Why? It's prestige. They don't mind youngsters go there, sit two hours, one cup of coffee only. Yeah, they're not selling coffee. Starbucks never say we sell coffee. No. We sell comfort, social interaction. We sell image. Lifestyle, yes, sir. That's what I want. Starbucks is your lifestyle. If cakap pada saya yang lima siri, apa itu lifestyle? Doa aja di rumah, bikin kopi sendiri. Yep, but not for them. Prestige, yes. That's why packaging is very important. And based on that, he said that it is the twofold goal of marketing. Attract new customer by promising superior value. At the same time, you keep current customer by delivering satisfaction. So thank you for you for giving me the right term. Starbucks is a lifestyle. Maybe not for you, but you cannot curse Starbucks because they have done the market research in Indonesia. That's why they're willing to be here. And have you ever seen McDonald's close the shop? They never close the shop. COVID-19 in Malaysia, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, these are the top priority of the food. They never close. But other SMEs, small, micro, what happened? Tutu, die. McDonald's, no. They expanding bigger, 24-hour services. Because they know how to understand their market segment. We are still holding traditional marketing. That's why the micro die in Malaysia also. How many closed shops? We close. Very, very affected. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So, based on that, the definitions of marketing also have to evolve. What is it that marketing nowadays is ongoing, continuous process? Meaning that for every business, you cannot just be happy with your current practice of your marketing. You have to evolve as well. So if you're in agribusiness, you have to look and think whether your current marketing approach, strategy, activities is relevant or not, regardless whatever productions of your agribusiness. Let me say that it's all about discovery Translating consumer wants. We didn't talk about basic needs anymore, you know. 
Just now when we look at Maslow hierarchy, they talk about the basic needs for food and water. But the marketing principle also now changing. They say that translating consumer wants. Maslow say that if you fulfill the basic needs, then you will move to wanting and desire. We already have enough sufficient food for the basic needs. And as I mentioned to you, every one of you are special to me because you are different from each other. Your lifestyle is different, okay? Whatever your needs, it's also different. So we don't target your basic needs anymore. We move further to wants and desire because now customers have money. They're accessible. Yeah, he's smiling. Yes. 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 They have money to fulfill your lifestyle. That's why Starbucks say it is a lifestyle. So that's why it say that you have to discover, translate the consumer wants into appropriate product and services. By planning, you have to plan. So when you want to create and innovate your product, planning is very important. And it's also said that when you develop your product, you cannot be shocked and dewey. That's what we call it. You sort of like thinking this is what they want. No. You have to have the marketing research and information. That's why nowadays when we talk about technology, we talk about Internet of Things, the 4G, 5G. Young generation, they understand what I'm talking about, the metaverse, because that's theirs. For us, five series like me, I'm struggling too. What is 4G, 5G, IoT, Industrial Revolution, IR? What is it all about? But it's moving very fast. That's why we talk about iCloud, big data, business analytic, big data. This is all very important nowadays for us if we want to sustain in the market. So it's said that when you develop your product, you cannot simply develop it. You have to have research about your customer, what they want, your expectation, their needs, their lifestyle, their interest, their preference, okay, their income the background, education, experience, exposure, and information. Then only you create the demand for this product. How? That's where you make profit, pricing, and promotion. Under keen competition, meaning that nowadays, business is very, very competitive. So if you don't prepare yourself, you're not going to sustain. And also it says that serving the demand through transport and storage. That's why now you can see we talk about e-commerce. And youngsters love e-commerce. But there are still a group of people like us. We like to go to the normal retail shop. But youngsters nowadays, we go for e-commerce. That's where I talk in Binus and Atmajaya on metaverse. Oh, the virtual. You use these glasses like this. You click here. You create yourself in that. For us, a big old generation, I've been thinking how you create yourself inside. But I read a lot nowadays. This is something new phenomena that everyone should know. The self-avatar, they call it. You create yourself in there. You're doing online shopping. You can create and try. That's why it talk about true transportation and storage that help channels of distribution, such as wholesalers, retailers. They have to change the way they approach. And this is what we call it marketing program or marketing mix. That is product, place of distribution, promotion, okay? And then also we talk about the services, the people, process, and physical evidence. So the four-piece and the seven-piece marketing mix strategy play a major role nowadays. So this is how the marketing work closely in agribusiness. 
If we still don't understand, I already exposed to you the philosophy of that, the theory of that, and the concept behind it. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so based on what I gave the definitions, understanding the theories, the underlying dimension, it say that agribusiness, in a broad sense, cover all activities ranging from procurement, distributions, or production facilities to the cultivation of farm production, processing activities, as well as marketing. So I do hope to this stage, you started to see how important marketing in agribusiness. Without marketing, market research, information, it's going to be tough for whatever field of business in agriculture you are doing. It won't sustain. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Every one of us here, including me, have to start acquiring knowledge, skills, knowing our customers. It's very critical. Next slide, please. So this is how, based on definition, philosophy of it, theory, they come up with agricultural value change. The upstream, midstream, and downstream. So agribusiness for agriculture, plantation, industry, you need to understand where is the position of this value change. By understanding this value change or supply change, then you will understand which part of this value change require technology advancements, require information, require innovation, because it will influence each other now. Because we already talked about agribusiness, it's all about everything. So when we talk about the upstream, its input supply includes all related to seed, crop, fertilizer, irrigation, equipment, insurance, everything, and many more. Then we talk about the production, the raw permanent crop, livestock, forestry, palm or anything related to that. Then logistics, transportation, warehousing, trading, waste management, cold chains and what so forth, and many more. You have to add the long list, whatever you are involved in the agriculture business. And then you talk about processing, packaging, staple food, beverage, livestock, products. You talk about distribution, retailers, supermarket, restaurant, e-commerce. In other words, in agribusiness, you are very, very critical to know all of this. You cannot say that it's not my job. This is not my role. This is not my responsibility. No, you have to know. You must know. Otherwise, you won't last in agribusiness. You won't last in agriculture because you do not understand the fundamental of it. Next slide, please. And when you divide it, it will help you to understand how your value change work, where you have to invest more money, where can you find the investor, where you can do joint venture, where you can get the insurance, where you can get the support system. Many small, medium businesses, even in Malaysia, they do have a problem in understanding the works and the interdependence of value change. So it's very hard for them to look at where should I focus more on promotion? Where should I focus more on the getting the machinery? What type of machinery? Packaging, labeling, and SME because I've done several grants to study business performance of SMEs in Malaysia. One of the key failure of their business is marketing. It's marketing. They produce good products, but they don't know what to do after that. Why? Because they don't invest and understand in this value change. Until today, we still have problems with SME or micro. And marketing is still an issue for them. That's why multinational companies like Nike, Starbucks, McDonald's, Shell, they can maintain in every country, Coca-Cola. Why? 
because the biggest part or portion investment they have is for research and development and marketing. Not operation, not on machineries. Because if you study management, okay, on economy of scale, your machine is the same. Whether you produce one unit or thousand unit, you use the same machine. Uh, you cannot say one can of Coca-Cola, use this machine. One can of co a thousand can of Coca-Cola, this machine. No such thing. Because I work in a private laboratory. We do blood testing. So for me to run the blood tubes, okay, when we do hemoglobin testing and what so forth, HIV testing, the machine, the carousel machine, we call it to split red blood cell and white blood cell, okay, you still use the same machine. Still rotating, same period of time. That's why we call it machines. You formulate, you program in such a way. So either I put one tubes of blood or thousand tubes of blood, tubes there, it's going to be the same. But when we talk about costing and operation, then we are losing on the one tube. Rather than putting 1,000, it's better, maximize. That's why we call it output maximization. So in a business, we talk about input, process, output. The process is very important. Whether you will maximize your output with low costing or you produce one output still producing more costing. So that's why we have to know all of this. Level of upstream, midstream, and downstream. Okay, next, please. And we have understand all the fundamental, how it works. Now I want to tell you the strength in agribusiness, the opportunity in agribusiness. It's all about commercialization of agriculture. This is where I want to talk about career opportunities in agriculture. So for students in agriculture background, do not feel scared about getting the job opportunity. What you need to do is to enhance your knowledge, to stay competitive in the industry. So you need to know what are the industry you are at in. So what is say that? Now the marketing strategy evolve, the business approach evolve. Same thing to the career opportunity in agribusiness, a lot. It say that commercialization of agriculture and activities help to pay way for agribusiness experts to acquire better job in the future. Why? Because marketing has helped them okay, to find ways to pave, to integrate all the activities in food business, food and beverage business. As long as you understand who are your market segments, you will understand what type of food you have to produce. So that's why food business come into picture. Agribusiness retail change. We nowadays have distributor, e-commerce, banking, insurance, supply chain management, logistics. That's why if you understand the value change just now, you will understand that marketing also changing to, okay, creative marketing. Nowadays, students in various backgrounds are very important in agribusiness because we need people who are good in designing the graphics, for example, to come up with label, packaging. And if you are in food nutritionist, we need information about food because nowadays customer, when we purchase the food, we look at the information details. So that's why commercialization of agriculture actually expanding and promising secure job in many fields. Let's move on to the next slide. Another strength for agribusiness. It's all about branding. Since COVID-19, the way we purchasing product related to food Food and beverages has changed. You can see that during COVID-19, most of other businesses, they shut down, close, okay, scale down. But food never stopped. 
restaurants, even though they didn't open for dine-in, but delivery, takeaway, still happening. So that's why Starbucks never stop, never close. McDonald's never close. Pizza Hut never close. All those instant food never close because they have the market segment. But what happened to our farmers? They are the ones who are in trouble because they do not know the value change that they can work together. So that's why I'm trying to tell you, during the COVID-19, companies are taking advantage by using that online to the same time highlighting their branding, their image. If they never do any takeaway delivery food, then they do it now. And every chances they have, like the packaging, they put their logo. That's why Gojek here is very popular. That's among the strong brand, Grab as well. In Malaysia, Food Panda. Yes, Food Panda and also Grab. And if you ask youngsters now, are you still going to use food delivery, Gojek and all of that? The answer is yes. Because they say it is convenient. And every packaging label, everything got the logo. That's how they're taking advantage on using the branding strategies to represent the strength opportunities in increasing the agriculture products. We should do that as well. And then this is the new marketing e-commerce. Like it or you don't like it, you hate it or what so forth, it's there. It's going to be there. Whether, so what we're going to do, is, instead of against it, we should embrace it, adopt it. Okay, next please. So another, uh, once just now we talk about the opportunities, we have to talk about issues and challenges as well. What are the issues and challenges? The first one is significant increase in demand and for food and natural resources. Because I already showed just now the forecast of world population per capita consumption. So this is going to be increase in demand for food production. The question is, can we meet the demand? Can our existing approach right now meet the demand and expectation? And then it's also say that when we can't meet the demand of the food and natural resources being asked by population, what is going to happen? People will go hunger. And this is going to go against United Nations sustainable development. It's all about world with zero hunger. So does your research, your co-curriculum, your teaching, it's actually supporting sustainable development. Does your subject courses that you are, te you are teaching to your students, master or undergraduate or PhD students doing the research, are you supporting sustainable development? So what do you find from the findings of your research, the model, the outcome, the market research that you do? Is it supporting sustainable development? That is another research you have to explore. And you say that in order for us to achieve world with zero hunger, there is specific requirement. More than just a productive, efficient, sustainable, inclusive, transparent, and resilient food system. It has to be about transformation. Transformations of the current agri-food system. So all of us have to go for transformation. Next slide, please. So what is that when we talk about the transformation agribusiness? The primary crop productions have shown eh, that productions of primary crops all increase. And also global crop production also increase due to the demand. So in other words, we cannot ignore what is it required right now in this existing world? Food production is very important. Next slide, please. 
And this is also another production related to food base. Vegetable oil production also increased. Meat production also increased. This is the lively stocks we talk about, plantation we talk about. So you come from that industry. You are the expert in the industry. But if you do not incorporate the right marketing approach, then you will not be able to achieve the United Nations Development Sustainable. So in future, I hope Pat Rector can come up with another session on sustainable sustainability development in agribusiness. That is very critical. To discuss on that, it will take another hours about that. Let's move on to the next slide. This is also one to show you. Meat production breakdown, cereal streets, it's all increased. This is what marketing is all about. Collecting the data, having the information will help you to understand how is the current demand right now? And what is going to be to the future? Next slide as well. Now, another challenges we are facing, okay, is all about new challenges. Biodiversity production, broad-based cultural landscape preservation, rural development, creation and safeguarding of job, notion of regional product, cultural assets, impact of climate change. These are all among the factors will be coming the challenges for agribusiness to survive and stay competitive. But having said that, having the knowledge in value change as I explain and share with all of you, will help you to prepare, planning, implement and execute and monitor how your agribusiness will move forward. Okay, next please. And another issue and challenge is about application of organic system. This is about the applications or organic system to food commodities, such as rice, okay? Many farmers now in dilemma whether to use pesticides, fertilizer, type of fertilizers. Just now I was talking to Pat Rector about nanotechnology. This is another thing we are talking about, nanotechnology in the food production. And we have the startup company in Malaysia. I do hope in future the collaboration will help and urge to expand that understanding. How nanotechnology help farmers to maximize their production. So this is another thing, becoming a dilemma, applying organic system. That's why the value change that you look at just now, you have to understand all those components. Because if you don't understand about that, then you do not know which part of that value change you have to add value. Either core value, functional value, or augmented value. Then, when we talk about system, organic nowadays is very costly. Even in Malaysia, vegetable, in organic section, is triple than the normal one. The question is, can it be affordable, accessible for everyone? Or only to certain group of people with money who are concerned about their health? But the question is, are you saying that people who has no money are not concerned about their health? No, that's why sustainable development goals talk about equality. Equality in education, equality in food consumption, equality in health as well. So that is very critical for us who are creating the products, who talk about organic, what happened to those who are consumed in organic. Are you saying they're going to die faster? Are you saying that? Does your product imply and indicate? So this is what we talk about, justice, fairness, equality. So it is very important for us to understand that as a producer of agribusiness, we should ensure all the organic agriculture products can be 
accessible, consumed by every level of people, not just certain group of people, then it becoming inequality already. So these are also another issues that we as a researcher can explore. Next, please. This is just to show you, okay, the pesticide use, fertilizer use is all increasing. Because why? Because we want to meet the demand of the world population. So this is another issue people love to look at in social sciences, ethicals, whether it is ethicals or not. To use pesticide and also fertilizer. Is it safe? The safety. Just now Maslow hierarchy was talking about besides food, waste, security and safety is also very critical. Next, please. So another one we talked just now, food quality and food safety. And this becoming an issue because many local products, either in Malaysia or Indonesia, can't enter international market because they do have different standard index procedures, safety. They have different protocols than the local market. But we cannot just focus on the local market. We have to expand to international market. Because locally, we compete among each other. We are killing each other. By right, we should supporting each other, work together to move to international market. And just now you saw, right, the number of population among the countries. China, okay, Brazil, and all of this. So we should bring Indonesian product, the local products, to international market. How do we do that? Okay, so food quality and food safety now becoming big issues. This is another area agribusiness, agriculture should look at. How can we ensure our standard, quality standard is acceptable at the international market? Like Starbucks, coffee bean, how do they come to our country? How did they go to China? What makes their coffee is acceptable? Why not the coffee club out here acceptable to different country? Why is it so tough, the rules and regulation? Does it mean our product is not good quality? Does it mean our policy, the protocol of our product quality assurance did not meet the international standards? Next, please. Okay, now we talk about the challenges. Let's talk about the sweet things also, opportunities of our agribusiness. You say that agribusiness can help one to gain profits, okay, by fulfilling the needs of rural community and also add bigger value to it. As I mentioned, you know, how Maslow hierarchy of needs talk about. And then it's all about agro-industry and marketing. Very, very crucial. You have to seek every opportunity we can to upgrade, to enhance the quality of our food production so that we can stay competitive, not only local, but international. Next, please. And also, we talk about commercialization of agriculture. This is where we should open up our product more specialized. If I say it just now, okay, all the verse are special. Then how do you ensure that I'm special to you, you will produce the right products to me. So that's why in terms of production, management, processing, transportation, packaging, positioning the product must meet not only at the local, but also international market. That is very critical. So the technical method for processing, packaging and transportation have to meet the expectation of every market segment that we go. Next, please. Now, another opportunities, policy. Does our policy in our country, not even your country, my country as well, hinder our growth? Does our process of transportation, logistics, 
hinder or blocking our farmers to move forward, our agribusiness to move forward? Does the education that we give for agribusiness students is relevant? Really relevant today? What happened tomorrow? What happened in 10 years? So these are the role of the universities to look into it critically as well. Because we do not want to produce the students that only relevant today, but obsolete in five years and 10 years time. The same thing, the product that we produce only relevant today, but won't last for three years. It's obsolete. That's why you see multinational company, they invest a lot in research and development, R&D and marketing. Next. I mentioned already about the career opportunities, so we will skip this slide. This is just to show you the workforce. They have done the study. It's actually giving, okay? 20% global workforce related to agriculture. In other words, they are very significant to all of us. Next. Okay, this is the part that I want to talk about digitalization and creative marketing. Technology is already being with us. It's not going to leave us anymore. The youngsters, the young generation, the millennial markets, the alpha, they live with technology. So as a farmers, agribusiness, community that involved in agriculture, you have to fully utilize now. How are we going to fully uh, utilize this is by using and getting information, data. That's why we talk about data analytics. So one way of doing it, we can come up with the website, online store, social media activities, and many more. This is just an example on the surface. What I'm trying to tell you and show to you that you have to embrace the technology. Okay, next, please. And this is what creative economy. And where is the agriculture and agribusiness work? They are, it's actually part of creative economy. And technology, consumer product, lifestyle wellness, spiritualism, and tourism. All of this engaging with agriculture and agribusiness. As an creative economy. What is creative economy? It said that, okay, for the smart agriculture integrated, they have to integrate with information and communication. They use biotechnology, environment technology, and nanotechnology that produce high value added integrated industry. So you have to be creative, innovative, because your sector, your segment, is contributing to the creative economy. Next. So how does it work? Let's focus on opportunity digitalization. We talk about IR, Industrial Revolution 4.0. We talk about 4G, now already 5G. Now it's going to be metaverse. So we can't run away from this. The importance of digital marketing and how the future is going to be. It's very critical for us to know what type of technology farmers, social community can use the technology to enhance their business performance, to spread the information about the benefits of their products. Because marketing is about relaying the messages to your customer about the value of your product, either core value, functional value or augmented value. Okay, next please. So when we talk about digital just now, it's very important for you to talk about mobile e-commerce. Nowadays, you can purchase any plants, agro-business, agrophonic. Nowadays, people who live in the house, in the apartment high-rise building can grow their Products, vegetable at home, tomatoes, I've seen it. My friend's been doing that. And this is another business you have to transform. If they cannot come to you as a business person, 
you should go and find your customer. So this is like push and pull strategy. Okay, next. So when we talk about creative marketing, we can't run away from social media. What do you say that in today's digital era, social media is the right tool for us to use, enhance our marketing ventures without having any limitation. So if our agribusiness is still not adopting the technology, then it's going to be a problem. Okay, next please. So it's already showed they have done it, okay, the study. This is Creative Economy Agency of the Republic Indonesia, okay? You can see that in Indonesia, social media becoming number one platform where people love to use it, okay? And then followed by website, outside media, brochure, exhibition, radio, TV, and others. So Indonesia also already embraced this because they believe this is what going to enhance the growth of the country economy. The question is, how is the current situation of people who are running the business in Indonesia in agribusiness? How are they doing? Any studies have done or not? What are the challenges they face? So this university, this researcher should take an advantage to research and explore more. How many of the micro small business in Indonesia using all this digital marketing? If they use, how effective? What are they planning? How do they executing? How do they implement that? Do they monitor the effectiveness of that? How do they perform in terms of their sales, the market share? This is very critical in terms of competitive advantage as well. Next, please. This is just another way just to show creative economy in Indonesia. I think you all know this product, right? You're not sure? Okay. Meaning that this company is still not advancing their product to be in the market to be known, okay? So they talk about that the micro-industry players such as MSME, Creative Economy and Entrepreneurship, they have to be innovative and create the product based on creativity. So this is the local product, Asa Paramen. It's a snack, okay? It's very interesting, produced by Mr. Herman Permana. This is snack in the form of stick noodles and macaroni with various flavor. They made, they process, they package. What I'm trying to show you here, from the raw basics, they transform that to make it more classy, sophisticated. And the question is, does this product can break through international market? It's for us to look at and explore it. Next, please. Okay, so based on creative economy, it's indicate that many, okay, creative economy have using the social media to actually look at how customer really likes to use this social media. They say that many customers, 72% likes and give comments about the product. That company have used the social media to engage with their customer. 62% will share and retweet among their friends. And then 60% interaction with consumers, meaning that you're the consumer, I'm the consumer, we're reviewing, and then we learn from each other about the product. And of course, 34% give the revenue, 32% inspiring consumer to take action, and then 29% inspiring and emotional response when they look at the product user social media. Next, please. We are finishing. This is another example to show you how creative marketing using language. You see, in marketing, it looks simple, but have significant impact. It's like agribusiness. People say, oh, you just farmers. Nobody wants to be farmers. 
But if you being creative, innovative farmers, you can be a millionaire as well. So this is why I'm trying to tell you creative marketing is very important. When we talk about creative marketing works with English language, the shift of Indonesian language to foreign language. If we want to enter international market, of course we are proud of our language. Like in Malaysia, we use Bahasa Malaysia. But if we want our product to be international market, accepting by global market, then you have to look at language is very important. Okay, next. Okay, this is just study show why foreign language very important, universal language, that is English. So you have to be creative to use language as well for your product. Okay, next. So this is another example show, showing me, okay, the coffee, the packaging, they're being very creative, they use English language, how this being accepted, okay, by international language as well. These are all creativity in marketing for agribusiness. Next, please. Okay, another set of packaging, labeling, how creative they are. Next, okay. So this is just to show you many studies have shown the benefits of being creative of your product. Okay, sorry the time is over, Prof. Aziza. Thank you so much, okay. But just go quickly to the end of my slide. I'm going to sum up now. Okay, this is all agrotech, just to show. Oh, earlier slide. Okay, I just want to show you and tell you. This agrotechnopreneurship, okay? According to various studies, when you talk about agriculture entrepreneurship, it's about farmers' ability to change or abandon old models. Mean we skip the old models, we transform to the new phase that have free market, sustainability, and digital technology. And I also found out that in Indonesia, you do talk about agro-technopreneurship. Written by Prof. Endang Gumbira Said, okay, in his book, Agro-Technopreneurship Indonesia. 2010, in other words, Indonesia already go into agro-technopreneurship. Professor Endang say that, this is about kemampuan mengelola pertanian dengan baik. Means that your ability to manage okay, your agriculture with good efficient. Okay, melalui pemaafan technology. He already said that. If you don't use your technology, appropriate technology, if you don't adopt appropriate technology, your agribusiness won't go far. And he also that if you use pemaafatan technology serta mengutamakan inovasi dalam pengembangan bisnes. So in other words, this professor already done the study in Indonesia saying that technopreneurship for agribusiness must adopt technology, innovation, and creativity. This is for sustainable business. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is just to show you being innovative and creative, do not just think about the raw products. Always think the conversion of it. From raw, it won't last long, but if you make it dry fruits, it will last long. If just raw, maybe for your local market, but if you want to go to global market, you have to transform that more creatively, dried fruits. It can be used in cereals, in cooking, in everything. So think out of the box. Okay, next please. So another one, this is also another technology used by different country. They call it bee vectoring technologies. This is to show you how they produce the bee the honey, okay, saying that innovation in agriculture will improve sustainable farming, quality of soil, and the crop as well. This is, they call it bee vectoring technologies. USM is currently doing it as well. We call it um, madu kelulut. Yeah, madu kelulut. If you come, Bapa, I'm more than happy to introduce you to them. 
Okay, these are the people who involved in agriculture as well. So they are producing bee using all kind of gadgets, technology, testing, and what so forth. This is all technology innovation. Next, please. Another technology now being used. Farm automation. By using all the software and the apps, they are able to check whether the crops got insects, beetles, whatever. Okay, the bugs. They can check the temperature, the location having problem. Okay, the people who in charge humidity of the soil. This is fantastic to show you how technology can help enhance the cultivation of the farming. Next, please. This is the entire landscape of how technology is connected. They call it crop, livestock, and forest integrated system, or called CLAVIS. Maybe in Stipper, have engineers, software people, can think about coming up with the technology, gadgets, apps, work together with the farmers. What type of apps you are using? In Malaysia, we are working on that as well at University of Science Malaysia because we are a research university. Next, please. And this is another innovation that I want to show you. Many companies are using it, farm management software that you will monitor your risk assessment, data that related to the industry of your products. Okay, what type of crops, consumer expectation. These are all about big data. So that's why it's very important. Next, another one. Okay, water management technology. Irrigation, they call it end drips where you control the water for your plants or fertilizer as well. Okay, next. So this, we come to the end, how it works. I won't explain too much. Next. Another way of looking at in the bigger picture, okay, the bug place, uh, how in reality people use e-groceries, online restaurant, cloud retail infrastructure. This is what I'm trying to show you, agribusiness, can work in all industry actually. Huge, big. Just don't look at about the farming, look at in the bigger picture. Next. And that's all from me. Okay. So Manmohan Singh say that, okay, agribusiness and food processing are important parts of modernizing our economy. And this modernizing our agriculture and moving into a phase where a more modernized agriculture helps not only farmers, but also help consumers. Okay? Even the former prime minister also say that of India, because India is one of the highest producer of agriculture. That's why recently when India controlling the export of their grains to different country, Malaysia also get affected. We are worried about that. Okay, with that, I thank you so much for your time. I appreciate for your attention. I do hope that the knowledge that I have that is very limited compared to all of you, okay, can be uh, learn something that I, I can say, the benefits for each of you. Thank you so much. And I Everyone have give big applause to Professor Aziza Omar. Thank you for the wonderful and inspiring lecture today. Okay, yeah, thank you, Ibu. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to hear first uh, the, a testimony from one of our uh, Magister Management Perkebunan alumni, yeah, one of our alumni in MMP. And now let us hear together the testimony from her. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Perkenalkan nama saya Dina Madhila. Saat ini saya sedang melanjutkan studi S3 di University of Science Malaysia pada School of Management. Sebagai alumni S1 dan S2 di Institut Pertanian di Jakarta, saya sangat bangga mendapatkan kesempatan untuk belajar di Magister Manajemen Perkebunan, khususnya yang memiliki kekasan di bidang perkebunan dan kehutanan. Saat studi di MMP. Saya belajar banyak hal, terutama kaitannya dengan ilmu perkebunan dan uh, khususnya manajemen perkebunan. 
didukung dengan dosen-dosen yang berkompetensi di bidangnya dan juga dosen yang berasal dari luar, seperti dosen-dosen praktisi. MMP juga memiliki banyak kerjasama dengan berbagai institusi, baik dari perusahaan nasional maupun internasional, sehingga memberikan peluang bagi mahasiswa untuk memperkaya wawasan dan relasi. Sekian testimoni dari saya. Uh, saya, saya mengucapkan, mengucapkan selamat, selamat datang, welcome, welcome for, for new student, student. and for, for the, the others, others still keep, keep spirit to finish, finish your uh, study. Oke, okay. okay. terima, terima kasih. kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oke, okay, thank you very much. And now uh, we will have question and answer session, everyone. Uh, if you have prepared for the question uh, for the for professor Aziza please uh, prepare your question and also we will uh, have a discussion with professor Aziza oh ya bisa dalam bahasa Indonesia ibu ya Jadi pertanyaan juga bisa dalam bahasa Indonesia. Sebentar ya, so, so, uh, belum belum kita mulai sudah langsung ada penanyanya. Sebentar Ibu dan Bapak, kita tunggu terlebih dahulu. Uh, we are still waiting for uh, the pre preparation first. After this, we will have a discussion, question and answer session. For those who are joining in online session, you may ask question through col chat column that are provided on a Zoom meeting. And for Professor Aziza, um, maybe we are sorry because you, we have to stop your presentation. <laughs> But uh, after this, you can continue with the discussion with yeah in question and answer session. And now uh, let us invite you to go to that chair Okay, it seems like we have questions from here. Yeah. Um, before we start to the question and answer session, before we start to the discussion, uh, let me make a brief conclusion. Maybe it's not really, um, I don't know, it's related to uh, the thing that you want to focus on, but uh, we tried to make the brief conclusion here. Uh, from your presentation, agriculture production need to know what consumers need, want, and also desire. We need to know about the involvements of strategy to get engagement consumers. We need to think for everything that we are produced as a product have to change with benefits. We need to be creative and high innovation to win the competition. Business perspective plays a huge role significantly in agribusiness to fill the consumers, customers' demand by implementing creative marketing and content marketing, which is very crucial in today's era. More than that, the following, uh, the current trend, social media, a language, a foreign language, the importance of foreign language also, Uh, in marketing should be given in the spotlight in our country. Um, there are some questions. Uh, I want to open for the first session. There are three questions. We are open to three questions first for the first session. Uh, is there any question here? Oh yeah, from Ibu Yuslina, please introduce yourself and you may ask the question directly to professor. Please, Ibu. Okay, thank you for the time, Miss Monica. And I want to ask something to Professor Aziza. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Uh, marketing in agriculture sector, especially for me, is uh, from forestry sector, uh, which have many product from uh, wood or non-wood uh, forest product. <coughs> so, 
uh, how uh, we market by metaverse to uh, tangible and intangible uh, forest product, Prof. Uh, and then uh, the second the second question is um, another social media uh, have we uh, has a another platform to uh, market uh, tangible or intangible forest product thank you prof the first question is how to sell product in metaverse tangible and intangible Metaverse. Yes, okay, in metaverse. For yeah. focus on wood or in general wood, wood and non-wood products. Wood and non-wood. Okay, yeah. how to use social media? Is it? And how to use social media? The metaverse. Metaverse. Oh. Do you need to? Um, I, I invite the others to ask another question or you want to oh, directly okay. answer let me answer one by one directly. because okay. i may forget what are the questions okay. yeah so please. if i may put it in a word that will be easier to understand is that you have the wood and non-wood products right who were asking me the question just now can you communicate where, where are you <laughs> oh why can't you come here at the front yes. let me see you Marketing okay. people, we love to see eye to okay. eye. Okay. Thank you. For yeah, yeah. You. Come yeah. here. Can I see you? Yeah. Can you come I'm in front? To out yeah. Where are you? Okay. Ah, fantastic. Because you ask question, I have to make sure that it's fulfill her expectation. The answer. Yeah. Okay. You are asking me about wood and non wood products, right? Oh, product, That's an yeah. industry. Okay. Then you are asking how to use metaverse. Yeah. Okay. Now. The fundamental of metaverse, okay, is a virtual world. Okay, they use the marketing uh, uh, theories that is content marketing, and then sensory marketing, experiential marketing, okay, and also emotional marketing. What these theories are saying that when you create your marketing strategy, okay, whether it woods, non-woods, or whatever product, you have to play with these four elements. Sensory, the eye. When people see, they will believe. The ears, sounds of it, okay? And then the hand is to touch of it, okay? The five senses. Eye, nose, ears, mouth, and hand. Okay? But because metaverse in the virtual, okay? Meaning, dalam alamaya itu. Right? So it's full of imagination and visualization. Imagine. But dalam metaverse, you can create the product 3D. So, but in reality, kalau sekarang, we use 2D. It's like, brochures so you only see brochures but dalam metaverse they use 3d dimension so that's why they use creativity content emotional that is more personalized that have emotional touch feeling into it so for the metaverse at this moment okay we are not there yet but we are going to because Facebook company, you know Facebook, they are moving now to Meta company, where they're going to create these smart glasses as cheap as possible so that everybody can buy this lens. So that's where all this agribusiness of the wood and non-wood, you have to work with graphic people, graphic designer. If you don't know how to design, it's fine. You work with other collaborators. The infographic. Right now, we use YouTube, right, to create the video. Later, you will work with all of these people. So you have to know, when you put your product, wood or non-wood, in Metaverse, make sure you apply the five theories that I mentioned. Okay? Content marketing, experiential marketing, 
okay and then emotional marketing sensory marketing and also brand engagement that is uh, bcce brand uh, customer brand uh, equity model so before you design make sure you know all of these principles okay we can talk about that later as well if you are interested to know more okay okay thank, thank you very much does it answer your question ibu yuslina is uh, that does it enough yes okay enough. yeah terima kasih terima kasih you're welcome ibu yeah there are four uh, things that you should analyze first before you go to that uh, wood marketing and non-wood also okay okay the next question i will um read it for you first from online online participant this is from febrian syah um i want to ask what is your opinion regarding the current black oil palm campaign how to deal with it there are two questions yeah the first one what is your opinion regarding the current black oil palm campaign and then how to deal with it okay fabrin uh, can you hear me fabrin can they talk to me as well uh, um we cannot talk to him directly ah, right now okay just asking questions type? by typing yeah all right uh, Fabrian, sorry. now you talk about black oil palm campaign. Well, it is very sensitive actually to talk about this. It depends how individual perceive it. It's all about perception. Okay, it's about perception. It is hard to say whether this is ethical or not ethical. Because for me, if you ask me, okay, you ask me my opinion you have to understand at the first place why this type of campaign exists a presence in the market what is the purpose of it because as i mentioned earlier marketing is about understanding your market segments and there are people who go against it sometimes when you come out with your campaigns in the social media and sometimes there are people who go along that way the question you have to ask why why such a campaign exists what is exactly the expression they want to convey then only okay you will deal with that ethically because we in reality as a business we cannot dismiss ataupun menolak okay sebarang opinion feedback from anybody because in marketing like me either you give me negative input or positive input for a business perspective is a constructive i usually don't call that negative or positive i usually call constructive feedback because when we say constructive feedback you are giving opportunity either for the producer to enhance to develop to co-create this is another thing you have to understand in business the way i look at i didn't come here with the mind that i'm better than your university or you better than me I'm not saying my business better than your business, your business better than me. No. I come because I want to co-create. So if you ask me how do I going to deal with this? I will understand what are their constructive messages and then I will co-create. Co-create a memorable experience. Meaning that I will understand I will try to understand what your needs. Bisho Maslow hierarchy already said you have to fulfill the needs, wants and desire. So that's how I will deal because you say how do I deal with that? That is my opinion. Okay? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um Mas Febrian Shah, you may consider the black campaign of palm oil as a constructive 
uh, constructive feedback feedback yeah not issue but feedback of what is happening today and then uh, you make co-create if a professor have to um, what is it how to deal with this how to cope with this we can uh, co-create a game yeah for uh, this uh, issue to become something more something new yeah because sometimes people always take negative they always mention of negative then you start perceive in a negative manner if everything you look at negatively nothing is going to be better so i don't believe in negative because it will create propaganda it will go political it will go all the matters but we are here today talking about saving future generation creating the equality in terms of education health and wealth and when come to agribusiness because palm oil also part of agribusiness it's very important for any country who produce it so instead of i take it side either it's negative or positive i look at it as constructive construct means you develop you initiate why should we go all negative all the time life is beautiful it's about embracing that's why people talk about technology as well technology will become negative technology this and this but if we co-create then we will see actually technology will facilitate right technology will speed up like all this technology you have in front of you here if we decline all this technology during covid-19 we won't conduct any classes anymore for two and a half years three years nearly what happened to our future generation no knowledge during that three years there are negative people who say technology oh it's horrible blah 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 no i don't take it that way i look at the constructive co-create together with technology for a betterment okay. okay yeah thank you very much uh ladies and gentlemen the the others is there any other question okay uh pak fami silakan okay terima kasih uh, puan prof aziza uh, nama saya fahmi from fahmi, fahmi from uh, department of agribusiness Oh. I want to ask you uh, according to the uh, hierarchy of needs by Abraham Maslow. Okay. Food is a fundamental or basic need. Uh, we know uh, food also uh, focus topic on uh, among world leaders and now uh, food product uh, food production uh, affected by climate change. In other side the young uh, generation the young Uh, generation uh, change about uh, taste food demand uh, so uh, macam mana uh, puan prof uh, berpikir uh, opinion about the about uh, food system to prepare and how to uh, uh, consume uh, consumer behavior in the future thank you Um, okay, the question from Pak Fahmi, I'm still confused also. Bahasa Malaysia aja untuk saya. Bahasa Indonesia, it's okay. Yeah. Ya, sejalan dengan? Sejalan dengan, uh, apa nama, hierarchy of need yang di, yeah, yang dijelaskan hierarchy, okay. ya, oleh uh, Abraham Maslow. Nah, produksi produksi pangan itu sekarang okay. menghadapi uh, bermacam masalah uh, salah satunya climate change di sisi lain di sisi lain uh, perilaku generasi muda ada berubah salah satunya dengan selera dan uh, permintaan pangan yang uh, uh, Puan Prof jelaskan tadi nah bagaimana sistem pangan ke depan dan macam mana uh, perilaku konsumen yang yang harus uh, apa namanya yang harus disiapkan 
uh, oleh okay. uh, food industry. Oh, okay, oh. alright. Okay. I think I get what you are trying to ask me. Okay, it's about preparation for future generation. Okay, on the food consumption regarding too much love. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Very true. Now, when I show Maslow hierarchy, tadi kan, itu the fundamental. But now, most of our market segments are not staying on the basic needs anymore. Sebab contohnya, kalau dulu, kita makan nasi sahaja. Tapi sekarang, uh, consumer sudah tahu the apa itu faedah-faedahnya makanan yang berkarbohidrat. Kemudian, sumbernya tidak perlu bergantung kepada nasi sahaja. Dan mereka sudah mempunyai pelbagai cita rasa, ya, pelbagai cita rasa. The taste it's different. So sekarang sudah masuk pasta, spaghetti, okay, macaroni. So it's no longer that they maintain on the basic needs. The way young generation look at, okay. They know that is keperluan. Tetapi keperluan itu perlu ada nilai tambah. That is augmented value. Jadi for industry, when they want to prepare the productions of this food, they have to study about the market now. Okay? Because generation X, Y, Z, and the millennials coming up, and alpha and meta, they don't look at keperluan asas itu perlu untuk hidup. They, mereka melihat keperluan asas itu adalah sebahagian, it's a parcel of it. What they are looking at is the augmented value. So kita sebagai pengindustri yang mengeluarkan produk-produk ini, Maaf ya, saya begitu alcik menjawab. I'm like that. I'm engrossed into it. What I'm trying to tell you is that you have to understand what their needs now. It's no longer about keperluan asas untuk hidup lagi. It's about how they will use this product, consume this product, and it's their lifestyle. So for us, we have to prepare in terms of processing the food from the raw. How do you convert as the food relevant to them? So you have to prepare in terms of technology, skills for food production. Must have all of this. So just now I mentioned the value chains, right? Ah, that's where we have to study, do research, finding. What does it require for the upstream, downstream, midstream to prepare and meet the demand of that? Because Maslow hierarchy hanya bagi asas. That was in 1950s, dari 1950. Tetapi sekarang sudah 2022. Bayangkan the time has changed. People change. Food is everywhere. I come to in Yogyakarta, I say, wow, this is the country heaven of food. Yeah. Tetapi for young generations like that, they don't want you tell me eat that food, that food. It's not my lifestyle. So that's why the marketing strategy is very important. Marketing mix, okay, produce of the product, place of distribution, pricing, promotion, Physical evidence, technology, all of these must be packaging in one product. That's what I want to tell you. Okay? Thank you so much okay. for the question. Is it uh, understood? Bapak okay, kan, Bapak kan? Meaning that kita jangan lagi lihat di basic itu. Sekarang udah wants and desire. And for them, it's already up there. Because hari-hari memang kita ada makanan. Negara kita tidak pernah kebulurannya hunger. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Kita belum pernah dengar Indonesia meninggal kerana tidak cukup makan, tapi kita meninggal kerana terlebih makan. Di Malaysia juga begitu. Kita terlebih makan. Ya, yeah. ya, yeah, betul. 
Oke, okay, yeah. yeah. uh, thank you for the question, Pak Fami, and also thank you for the answer. We still have one question. Oh, this is wow. related to food, and this is a uh, interesting question from ah. Anand dan Vika Muhammad Habibi. Uh, when SJW vegan community declare to citizen a prohibition for eating animal meat, does it affect to agribusiness marketing? How? Uh, your opinion about this, Professor. Okay, thank you very much, Anand, uh, Denfika. Uh, this is very interesting question. Actually, I love to use this case study in my class as well. Um, this is where the STP model come into picture. Yeah? Segmentation, targeting, and positioning. As I mentioned to you earlier, all of you are special to me, including People are vegan, vegetarian, for example. And I try to be a vegetarian as well. Uh, frankly speaking, at my house, I don't buy chicken or meat at all. Because, yes, because as a person in marketing, I have to experience it. I have to understand what does it mean by vegan and vegetarian. So in my house, I don't have chicken or any meat. I only have eggs in my house, okay? But that's how I prepare. I didn't go to wet market in Malaysia for many years already, even to buy fish and what so on. But when outside, saya makan. Saya makan ayam, saya makan chicken, semua saya makan. Okay? What I'm trying to tell you, being a person in marketing, you have to experience, then only you know how to talk. That's why kalau di rumah ada ikan atau ini, saya tidak pernah cuci. Mau keluar dalam perut itu. Right? I feel like puking. But I can understand also people who are vegetarian because they have their own perception. So one more time I'm telling you, uh, Anan, uh, do not look at these as a negative, okay? Look at these as a constructive. How do you work together with vegan, okay? Because when we talk about business, it's about free market. You cannot force one person to eat another food when you cannot eat. And sometimes because of religion, for Muslim people, there are certain foods you cannot take. So you cannot force them to take. For some people who are vegetarian, they also have the reason. Okay? And for people who eat all kinds of foods, it's also a region. That's why when we study consumer behavior, we have to look at the factors that influence why some customer market salmon will eat this, will buy this, or will reject this. So for vegan community, they declare okay, to citizen from eating all of this. Okay, we respect that. What do we do when we respect that? Some restaurants, they want to focus on this market segment. That's why we come up with vegetarian restaurants, vegan restaurants. But we cannot change entire Indonesia to have vegan or vegetarian restaurants. Then you come back to sustainable development goals. Where are the equalities? Where are the justice? Are you fair to us as well? So the best thing is to live in a harmony, balance. We understand your inputs, okay? We respect, we take that constructive. As an agribusiness, you should take this an opportunity as well. Maybe your farms should focus on this group of people. That's why we mention it as segmentation, you target. But in other farms, you may not go to this market. This is a free market. Anybody can say, anybody can buy, anybody can reject. So that's how I look at, okay? How does it affect? The way I look at, it is all about how you deal with that. Okay, how you take the business strategy, use the segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Then your brand will last long. If you're targeting on the vegan community, you can go with that. If you do not want, nobody should force you as well. It's just about how you're communicating to your 
market segment. And how we maintain the sustainability yes, in the market. very yeah. true. Okay, yeah. thank you very much, Professor, for the answer. Um, I'm still open one question to this uh, room, audio theater. Is there any one more question from person here? No? Okay, if okay. there is no other question. Kalau udah kepenatan itu. Sebab enggak ada metaverse. metaverse. Online gaming enggak ada. And innovation. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank, uh, if there is no other question, I think that's enough for this uh, discussion, okay, question and answer you. session. Thank you very much, thank Professor, you so much for, for your time, for uh, opportunity to be our guest speaker thank here. Thank you. Thank you Bubina very much for arranging this yeah. meeting. I'm very touched to come here. <laughs> thank you. And once again, give applause to our general lecture today. And uh, after this, we will have a photo session okay. for today's event and i don't know ini i can stand up already ini bagaimana arrangement-nya kursinya yeah, untuk foto bersama ini apakah five berdiri series. atau kena bangun ber, uh, duduk oke okay. uh, penyerahan oke okay. oh, penyerahan uh, we will give souvenir from MMP to Profesor Aziza uh, untuk penyerahannya mengundang Pak Rektor baik Pak, Rek, uh, Pak Rektor, silakan dapat membantu memberikan menyerahkan kenang-kenangan dari Instiper kepada Profesor. And also certificate ya, yeah. giving souvenir and certificate from Instiper to Profesor Aziza from USM. Seventy around seventy. Okay, take picture. Yeah. Silakan ibu lebih dekat. <laughs> Oke, okay, give applause to Pak Rektor, Bu Director, and also Professor. Thank you, and also certificate, Bapak. Penyerahan sertifikat dari Instiper kepada USM. There is one more thing. Yeah, one more thing, Bu Ibu Kadarwati, you may give this souvenir to oh. Professor. For me again. Yes, there are a lot for you. Sering-sering datang, Ibu. Amin. Okay, give a big applause to this collaboration between Instiper and also USM, University Science Malaysia. Thank you very much kepada Bapak Rektor dan juga Ibu Direktur. Uh, you may have a seat. And also Ibu, we still have photo session together. Oh, mohon maaf Bapak dan Ibu, masih ada foto bersama lagi. And, oh yeah. Bapak Rektor dan juga Ibu Wakil Rektor, silakan Ibu Direktur, Ibu Dina Mardatila, mari kita akan masih akan ada sesi foto bersama sebagai closing penutup untuk acara hari ini.
Ayo mahasiswa juga bisa ikut. Silakan. Baik, diberi aba-aba ya Mbak Naning. Oke, okay. uh, students, do you want to join also? Please come to the stage. Silakan mahasiswa jika mau. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, participants, we have had productive and inspiring time together, and this event about to come to the very end. I hope you found the materials on this general lecture are. Uh, helpful, informative, and also beneficial for us all. And thank you for all the particip participants, whether in online and also offline. Okay, thank you once again for all the participants who are joining online and also offline for this general lecture. And uh, have a nice day, everyone. And we still have photo session here for the offline session. Mahasiswa S2 silakan atau alumni atau calon mahasiswa S2 silakan. To realize the dream and spirit that synergize and collaborate. Postgraduate MMT Institut Yogyakarta. The right place to continue and deepen studies in the field of plantation, especially the master program in plantation management. Field trip to the plantation industry. Learn plantation study from the experts. Plantation management specifications were established in 2005. Become Indonesia's first and only master of plantation management program. Create a scientific research center to solve existing plantation uh, issues. Bapak, Ibu, yang di jajaran, Modern rektora, plantations webinars. Supported by the best Tetap facilities, constantly expanding to ensure the continued existence of regular sehat. classes and employees. Offer high quality education and research. Untuk yang dari We are fully committed to remaining the educational center of excellence for producing professional human resources, as well as contributing to the providing of superior and competent human resources, professor and doctoral level lecturers, and practicing lecturers from within and outside the country. We believe that as things settle down, everything will become clear. We also believe that from now on, our dreams will come true.
Terima kasih para mahasiswa. Ingat saya di waktu itu hotel Asia, Kuala Lumpur. Tapi dari situ saya tahu bahawa saya berdiri. Ya, mereka sudah sukar namanya rebranding. Tapi, 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 tapi